A pleasant good evening to you online viewers and welcome back to another Sunday night service where we can fellowship and learn more about our creator. This evening we have a very special topic in store for you. So call a friend and spread the news and tell them that we are here on a mission live. Before we move further, let's put ourselves in a manner for prayer as we ask God's guidance for this evening's program. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you for the breath of life. As we come before you, we ask that you forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us we thank you for your blessings we ask that you'll be with the program this evening be with the viewers as they listen they will be drawn closer to you have your way lord jesus and cover us with your blood take charge and control in your name i pray amen it is now time for our song service and our choristers are ready to lift up the name of jesus through songs Online viewers, join with them and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It's a pleasant good night to everyone. Welcome back to another Sunday night's service. And we will commence tonight's service with song service. We'll begin with song number 434, We Speak of the Realms. 434. of the realms of the blessed land, country so bright and so fair, and of glory's glories confess, but what must it be to be there? We speak of its service of gold, its walls that with jewels so rare, its wonders and pleasures untold. What must it be to be there? We speak of its freedom of sin From sorrow, temptation, and care From trials without and within But what must it be to be there? We speak of its service 
abyss of love, of the robes which the glorified wear, of the church of the firstborn above, but what must it be to be there? Our morning is all at an end, when raised by the life-giving word, we see the new city descend, adorned as a bride for our Lord, the city so holy and clean, no sorrow can One o nine, one zero nine, marvelous grace. Sing for I cannot keep silent. 
silence, his love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it is silent forever. song tonight would be song number 248 oh how i love jesus 248 song service that was god's name be praised thank you so much choristers now prayer is the opening of the heart to god as to a friend not that it is necessary in order to make known to god what we are but in order to enable us to receive him prayer does not bring god down to us but brings us up to him and at this time, Pastor Jamie Gordon will intercede on our behalf. At this moment, I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Father God, we just want to celebrate the gift of life that you have gifted us for one more day. We thank you for the ending of another day as we are poised for the week ahead. We are very thankful for this opportunity to preach and even Receive the gospel. And at this moment, oh God, we just pause asking for the forgiveness of our sins. And we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. In a mark and special way, we lift up all our families, all our homes, parents, husbands, wives, children. We ask, oh God, for a fresh dose, a fresh anointing. We just pray for peace. We pray for understanding. We pray for wisdom. We pray for those that are destitute and needy that you would supply all their needs according to your riches in glory. But I pray, O oh God, that we would be willing to be your hands and your feet. We also pray, O oh God, for our church, 
even in this juncture in our history, we know that we are plagued with many different influences, philosophies, um, different beliefs, different practices. And much of them, O oh God, are impacting the church in a severe manner. But I pray, O oh God, that we will stay very close and will hold dearly to our hearts the true, unadulterated truth. I pray for all our church leaders, the elders, the pastors, the members, the officers. I pray, O oh God, that we live a life of purity, holiness. And uh, I pray, O oh God, that as we give of our best, we pray that our membership would be blessed and our ministries, O oh Father, would grow even in leaps and bounds. Into your hands, O oh God, we lift up the preacher for tonight. You have given him a word, you have given him a message. I pray that the same manner in which you inspired him, I pray, O oh God, that you would empower him to proclaim without fear or favor, thus said the Lord. We pray for us, the waiting congregation, in our homes, probably on the road, driving, wherever we are. I pray that our hearts will be open so that we can receive a word in this season. So we just commit the rest of the program and the proceedings into your hands. Um, we lift up all the evangelistic work that will be going on at this time. We ask your blessings. We ask your favor. And I pray, O oh God, that this church, militant, O oh God, we look forward for the day when it will become the church triumphant. Keep us faithful until such a time, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Gordon. Our scripture reading this evening is taken from John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. You will listen while I read. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples was gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, accept drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From hence then hast thou that living water. Good is the reading of God's word. As you meditate on the scripture reading this evening, our hearts will be blessed with a special in song. Looking for answers, you need a way out. You've been trapped in that trial, full of sorrow and doubt. You saw a trickle. Sunlight, but you found no escape. Just hold on to his promises. He said, You may go away. He's there 
Thank you for that special in song. What a message from God this evening. Online viewers, I hope that you were blessed. God's name be praised. Online viewers, it is now time for the main course, which is the preaching of the word. This evening, we have Pastor Marlon Peters, who will bring to us the message from God. And he will expound on the topic, Wellness Bridges Gap. Yes, wellness bridges gap. Very interesting topic. So online viewers, pay attention and listen carefully as Pastor Peters bring to us this message. Pastor Peters, I now turn over the time to you. Good evening, everybody. And it's a joy to be with you here for another message from the Lord. Uh, it's a tremendous privilege for me to stand before you today and to speak to you, thus says the word of the Lord. But before we delve into scripture, shall you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we bless your name in all the earth. We're thankful for your goodness, your love, and your mercies towards us. Grant unto us, Lord, your inspiration and your divine will as we listen to your holy scripture. Grant unto us the willpower to stand the test of time we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to speak to you on the subject this evening. Wellness bridges gap. Wellness bridges gap. Our scripture for focus comes from the book of John. The narrative of John chapter number 4. I read while we follow. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which he called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that, that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, 
If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give thee shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give thee shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thine husband. In that saidst thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and he said that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when he shall neither in this mountain nor he at Jerusalem worship the Father. According to verse number 24 of the very same chapter, the Bible says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. The woman, according to verse number 28, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man, which told all things. That ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. Wellness bridges gap. The Bible speaks of this narrative in a very particular fashion. There, is a, there are some things to note from this narrative. First of all, the Bible says that there was some information in circulation that Jesus was baptizing more individuals than John. The writer of the Johannine narrative or epistle makes it very clear that Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples did. It seems as though Jesus' reason for living was because of these information that were in circulation. You see, my friends, Jesus is not about self-glorification, neither self-aggrandization. Jesus is all about mission and ministry. And so the Bible says, because of such, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. There is something that we must note here that this journey, though it was a shorter journey, but it was a journey that was very dangerous. It was not a journey that a Jew will normally find traversing on. As a matter of fact, Josephus would have indicated in as much as it is a three days journey, going to Samaria or the city of Samaria was, it was definitely on the main ridge road between Judea and Galilee, known as the ancient way of the patriarchs. According to Josephus, 
It took, some, it took about three days to travel to Samaria. Some Jews of this time probably preferred to avoid this route and travel the longer way from Jerusalem down to Jordan Valley along the river and enter into Galilee via the crossing of a place that they call Bethshan. Both roads could bring purity-oriented Jews into contact with those outside the covenant. In this case, it is the Samaritans and Gentiles. It was not a comfortable choice, my friends. Stay with me. But some Jews probably would have chosen the Gentiles to the Samaritans reject. Travel could always be a problem. The point was avoiding contact. In this story, my friends, <coughs> excuse me, the focus is on contact with Samaritans. An issue clearly noted by John in the conversation with the woman and Jesus. You see, my beloved brethren and friends, Samaritans were regarded by the Jews as despised half-breed. The offsprings of resettlement policies of the cruel Assyrians, who after sacking the northern kingdom in 722 BC, transported large groups of conquered Jews to other conquered sites and repopulate the partially vacant sites with other conquered people. The re result, rather, was an intermingling of people who in the mixing of the races lost much of their former national identities and were thus forced to develop syncretic identities. In other words, my friends, the Samaritans and the Jews had no dealings with each other. As a matter of fact, the Jews will prefer walk longer paths and journeys just to avoid crossing paths with Samaritans. It is clear from the biblical narrative that none want to have any dealings with each other. As a matter of fact, the Samaritans, they closed the biblical canon with only the Pentateuch. They didn't want to have anything to do with scripture after the Torah of Pentateuch. The Samaritans and Jews, they were very much different, different in ideology. They served different gods. And hence, it, was very, it is very imperative to note that one of the foundational reasons that they were so bitter with each other, it is because of the varying views of morality and religious identity. But the scripture, according to the Bible, in John chapter number 4, it is interesting, my friends, to know that Jesus journeyed the shorter distance, though it was terrible and dangerous, to meet a very, what should I say, a Samaritan woman. The Bible seems to suggest that Jesus went and sat at Jacob's well. The Bible gives the time that it was about the sixth hour. Jesus was wearied and he sat at the pool or the well. But there is something that we must note. According to the Bible in John chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says that he, he needs be to be at the well. As a matter of fact, the Greek word that is used there is edai. However, it reminds one of the fact that usually Jesus moved not in response to human pressure, but as a result of the Father's direction and the determining hour for his life. But he needs be at Samaria. In other words, it was necessary that Jesus be at Samaria. So it, it was not something by just chance. It was necessary that Jesus be at Samaria. Why a weary Jesus sitting on a well needs be at Samaria? Note well, my friends, that it was the sixth hour of the day. It was not the normal time 
for a Samaritan or Samaritan woman in particular to come at the well. Normally, history tells us that they will come in the cool of the day and the sixth hour here symbolizes that the sun was hot. But Jesus is sitting at a well in the hot sun. The Bible says that the, the woman approached Jesus. Jesus, ask her a question. Very personal question. Give me a drink. Feeling relationship. Wellness must bridge gap. Jesus needs be at the well because a woman would come at the well. She came at the sixth hour. Just the time when Jesus sat on the well. It was not normal. As a matter of fact, history seems to suggest that the women of Samaria will normally come to the well by groups. And it was the very same place where the news of the day will be discussed amongst these women. The business of individuals will be, will be talked about. The headline of the community will be discussed at this very well. And persons will be informed by the time they leave, left the well or leave the well. And, but, but this Samaritan woman, she was seeking to evade what persons had to say. She was seeking to get rid of the naysay and the hearsay. And therefore she came at the well by herself. The text seems to suggest the reason why she came by herself. It is interesting to note that this woman was rejected by the very community in which she lived. The text seems to suggest that the woman had five husbands and she has a keeper now that is not hers. And she knew very well in, in, in coming at the well when a mass multitude is there that, that she would be the subject of the day. She will be humiliated, ridiculed, talked down to, talked about. Hence the reason why she secretly came to the well by herself. I'm speaking to somebody to this evening because someone needs to understand that, that that wellness bridges gap. Jesus needed to go to Samaria, to Samaria. You see, we need to understand sometimes as God's people, we need to forget how dangerous things may look or appear. And we need to go based on God's ordinance for our lives. And so Jesus needed to go to Samaria. Samaria. Because there is a woman whom he need to rescue. You see, Jesus, Jesus' encounter with this Samaritan woman was not just to change the life of this Samaritan woman. But Jesus needed to ensure that the Samaritans hear the good news of salvation. His main reason for, for going to Samaria, it is that persons will get to know who Jesus really is. The Bible tells us that he had a conversation with the woman of Samaria. According to verse number 10 of the very same chapter, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and he it is that ask you for some water, you will ask of him? and he will give you everlasting life. It is imperative also to note that this conversation, his disciples was not there. He was there by himself with the woman. Jesus' conversation with this woman violated even the moral principles of the day. First of all, you will never see a Jew speaking with a woman in public, not even the wife far less a prostitute. So it violated the order of the day. But at the very same time, it violated the order of the day. It expresses the extent of God's grace to redeem humanity unto himself. You see, sometimes the order of the day might be neglected just to establish the fact that God's grace is sufficient. We are living in a pluralized society where sometimes we put the order of the day above the principles of God. 
We are more concentrated, concentrated on the things that are temporal than this very thing which is eternal. The order of the day, Jesus rejected to bring salvation unto an individual and the entire community. Sometimes the order of the day needs to be violated so that God can be established. And so the woman, she says, sorry, you don't have nothing to deep water. But you're talking about, you can give me some water. She said, you're speaking as though you are greater than the prophet Jacob. I just love Jesus. Because the Bible says that Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh this water, they will get thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I thank God for this woman. She said, sir, give me this water. Give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, go call <coughs> thy husband. You see, it is, it is important for us to know that the water that Jesus has to offer comes with a condition. Jesus' water comes with condition. And the condition simply is that we must be willing to accept Jesus to cause the transformation in our lives. So it is not a case that Jesus has water and you will just grab it. There are some adjustments at times that we have to make. And Jesus is saying to her, oh, you want this water? Then let's see if we can fix the problem. Go call your husband. Uh, I have no husband. You're sure right. You got no husband. You had, you had five husbands. And the one you are with now is not yours. But I thank God for the seventh husbands. The seventh husband who will redeem your past experiences and bring you up to point or to mark with heaven's reality. And so she said to Jesus, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, you're sure right. The woman, because of such experience, this is getting powerful. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Because of the experience, Jesus, my friends, were not involved in the shaming and naming of that woman. She worshipped a false god. She was a harlot. She was a Samaritan. Jesus never pointed to her that she was rejected and neglected. Jesus saw an opportunity to redeem her. And what is striking about the woman is that she was willing to accept the invitation in accepting Jesus. And then the Bible says in verse number 21, Jesus made it clear God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We can't worship God with, with our 28 fundamentals. But we must worship God in spirit and in truth. The introduction of Kai in Greek simply suggests that in order to worship God in the manner that is acceptable, it must not just be on the basis of truth. But it must accompany the spirit. You see, truth can be a set of codes that is handed down to us that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day. Truth can be the fact that Jesus healed. But, but when we have the spirit, spirit simply says, what do we do with the truth that we have? And therefore, there are many of us today who are worshiping God in truth. The seven day Sabbath is real. We are worshiping God in truth. The Ten Commandments commandment has to be kept. But are we worshiping God in the spirit? The application of the truth. And so Jesus makes it clear to that woman. 
the information that you now receive will, will, will be painless and effortless, effectless, effortless, effortless, if it is not accompanied by the Spirit, by the Spirit. And you say, well, I know. In verse number 20, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto you, am he. Jesus uses here my, my beloved brother, Ego I me. Jesus didn't, didn't just say, I am he. Jesus uses Ego I me. I must inform you what is Ego I me. You see, I can say, I am a pastor, but there are other pastors, and there, there, there will be more pastors to come. I can say that I am a, I'm a fisherman, but there are other fishermen, and there are more fishermen to come. You see, I, I, I can say that I'm a theology student, and there are many theology students, and there will be more to come. But when Jesus exclusively uses ego, I mean, it means I am he. I am he that was. I am he that is present. And I am he that will come. It simply means that him alone possesses the ability and power to give unto sinners like myself and you life eternal. Ego, I mean, says I and I alone. It gives a double emphasis on the subject of the matter. In this case, it is Christ. He is the only one that uses that, that, that word, ego, I mean. When he mentioned that I am the bread of life, he uses ego, I mean. I am the living water, he uses ego, I mean. It simply means that exclusively Jesus alone possesses the ability to, to, to recapture a woman that was dying from hatred, dying from being ridiculed, dying from depression, dying from switching men to the point where she would have recognized the significance as to coming in contact with the God that is divine. Ego I mean. And here's the reason why, my friends, we all today must understand that if we want to bridge the gap of sin in our lives, we need a wellness experience. We need an experience where the Messiah and us individually will speak. We need an experience ex exclusively between us and God. There, there are many gaps for us to bridge. There, there are many sinful gaps for us to bridge. But we need to understand today that before you come to the well, Jesus is there. Because according to the scripture, he, he, he was, it was necessary for Jesus to visit Jacob's well. He didn't go there by chance. It was necessary. Well, as I bring this message to a close, the Bible says, she left the water pot and she gone. She told them, in verse number 29, come see a man, Jesus, which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? You know, as I was reading this passage, there is something that is powerful for us today. Is not this the Christ? The woman went And was involved in mission and evangelism. But at the same time, the woman was not 100%. She was not 100% sure that this is the Messiah. This question is in the negative. I don't know, in other words, if he is the Christ. But come see a real man. It tells us, my friends, we will not reach to the point where we know everything. But what we know must surpasses and supersedes what we don't know. So in as much as she didn't have all the information, she was willing to share what she had. Come 
see a man. Come see a man. Scholars believe that the woman would have went directly where a group of men were communing. She went speaking to the men. Come see a man. Why? Because most of the men will know her. The Bible says, as I bring it to a close, then they went out of the city and came unto him. The experience of a harlot caused an entire community to know Jesus. She needed a wellness experience. Jesus needed to bridge the gap. You see, Jesus did not get involved in Sabbath keeping and commandment keeping. Jesus did, didn't get involved as to the 20th fundamentals. He could have gotten there. He could have pointed her to many things that they were doing wrong. But Jesus pointed to her. He said, let's speak on a personal level. He got down to where she is. He exposed his sin in her life. And then he shows her clearly there is a way outside of it. She left the water pot and she gone. You see, it is, a, it is a chiasm in Greek. The very same thing that she came by the well for. It is the very same thing that she let down the water pot and forget. So she came for water and she got living water. Today, my friends, there are many gaps <clears throat> for us to bridge. Jesus is at the well. He's waiting at the well. In as much as he's worried, he doesn't allow the temporal mortality of man to hinder the mission that he has established. He's waiting at the well. As weary at times he may be, that does not deter him from the fact that his grace is sufficient for all of us. Do you want a wellness experience? Do you want to bridge the gap of sin in your life? I'm saying to you today, my friends, wellness bridges gap. Because at the well, Jesus is there and he's waiting. Trust God today that the wellness experience will bridge the sinful gaps in our life. May God bless us all. I pray for you at this time. Father, we bless your name in all the earth. Grant unto us, Lord, your peace and the extension of your grace. And Father, I pray today that the experience at all well, where we are, will bridge the gap of sin and Satan. Grant unto us the peace that passeth all understanding and lead us in the ways of righteousness, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Peters, for such a powerful message from God. Online viewers, it's such a blessing to hear from the Word of God this evening. I hope that you are blessed and you will share whatever you have learned to someone out there, your family, your neighbors, friends, whoever you may meet this upcoming week. But before you go, I would like to share this thought with you. The water that Christ referred to was the revelation of his grace in his word. His spirit, his teaching, is the satisfying fountain to every soul. In Christ is fullness of joy forevermore. Christ's gracious presence in his word is ever speaking to the soul, representing him as the well of living water to refresh the thirsting. It is our privilege to have a living, abiding Savior. He is the source of spiritual power implanted within us, and his influence will flow forth in words. It is our privilege to have a living, abiding Savior. He is the source of spiritual power implanted within us, and his influence will flow forth in words and actions refreshing all within the spheres of our influence, begotten in them desires and aspiration for strength and purity, for holiness and peace, and for that joy which brings with it no sorrow. This is the result of an indwelling Savior. Online viewers, we thank Thank you so, so much for joining with us this evening. And before I go, I would like to share some announcements with you. 
Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-9640. Passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon and 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner on Tuesdays at 11.30 a.m. and a rebroadcast will be at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m. and our Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. followed by our Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. And join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada via YouTube and Facebook as we study the Word of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your word this evening, just reminding us that you are the spring of living water. We ask that you will help us to bless someone out there, whatever we have learned this evening, that we will help them to get to know you better, Lord Jesus. We ask that you will be with the online viewers as they enter the new week. Go forward and make a way and continue to provide and protect for them. Cover us with your blood, Lord Jesus. Take charge and control, and we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for always being there for us. We thank you for everything that you have done for us and what you will do for us in the future. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, and have your way. Thank you for hearing and answering prayers. In your name I pray. Amen. Have a blessed week ahead, everyone, and may God bless you. Oh